Hey, Sophia here. What's for dinner? I'm making some cauliflower and uh, it's actually a baked oven crumb cheesy cauliflower. It's a recipe that I've modified from something that I saw in Taste of Home. Um, I'm basically using some of the ingredients that I have here that are called for in the recipe but I did not have and I don't want to be bothered going to the store so might as well make up my own. So basically the ingredients are a cauliflower as fresh as possible. You need uh, about a, I don't know, a third of an onion. I have some herbs here from the garden. I have rosemary and basil. I have some uh, pecans that I'm going to have to finely chop and orange. I'm going to use the zest and the juice. I have some Parmesan cheese, some Swiss cheese, panko, breadcrumbs and some milk. So basically the whole recipe asked for the cauliflower to be cut first in florets and then steamed. When that's done on the side you just cook the milk with the rest of the ingredients and that would be um, the pecans and the herbs and the uh, um, orange uh, zest and the onions and then you mix everything with some cheese and uh, actually there's one egg that I didn't add um, and then pour it all over your dish with some cheese and some breadcrumbs and a little bit more pecan and then put it in the oven and let it melt and finish cooking so yeah let me get started I have no idea how it's gonna taste like but all the ingredients are pretty good so I'm expecting this is actually going to be delicious. Let me get started. We're going to start by cutting the uh, florets and um, steaming them. Alright, so I'm going to start by taking the stem out. And again, I want to be very careful because those Chicago curry knives are really, really sharp. My husband just um, hurt himself yesterday and that was not fun at all. So I'm going to first cut them in big chunks and then I'll go back and separate them further. Cauliflower in a lot of um, diet recipes are very good if you want to feel like you're eating a starch so they're a good alternative to mashed potatoes I guess because you can mash them. Um, I personally like it, not everybody likes the taste of it, and that's fine, um, but they're very healthy for you. So I'm cutting pieces no bigger than this. That would probably be like the size of a cherry tomato. And all I'm doing really is uh, separating them and cutting them in quarters. So I've just cut all of my cauliflowers and washed them and rinse them making sure that you know if there's any dirt or uh, leaves or whatnot is gone and then I place them in one of those steam baskets that have maybe an inch and a half worth of water and because it's a little bit too tall or it's overflowing here and I can't put a lid I'm just going to use my um, stainless steel bowl and put it upside down like this and I'm going to let them steam for about I'd say a good 15 minutes, maybe a little bit less, just to make sure that they get nice and soft. And while this is happening, I'm going to mix the rest of my ingredients. I have just about a cup and a half worth of pecans um, in my mini blender or food processor. And these are just natural pecans. They are not, um, you know, salted or um, sweetened or roasted or anything. They're just fresh pecans. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and chop these. Now depending on how crunchy you want your dish, um, you want to keep them, you know, medium size, but I'm just gonna put them, let me see. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna probably go another three or four rounds. my pecans all nicely chopped I'm just gonna go ahead and get um, the zest of one orange so I just have a regular grater and go ahead and get the zest now 
Don't forget to wash your orange before you do that because sometimes put um, pesticides and waxes and all manner of chemicals to make them look pretty at the store. So I made sure that I washed it and scrubbed it because so, I really try to limit the amount of chemicals I ingest. I'm just going to go ahead and get the entire zest. I'm going to put that with the pecans inside because that's going to get mixed all together anyway. I'm going to chop some onions. And it's not a lot of onions. I don't want to overwhelm my dish. This is more on the sweet side with cheese than anything else. So I'm just going to finely chopped onions and these are not going to get cooked with the milk. With the milk I'm only going to put the pecan, the orange and the herbs with a little bit of uh, spices and I think I'm going to do um, some nutmegs. I should have picked up a bigger knife but I can manage with the little one and that's fine. I tell you dear onion and orange together smell very, very exotic. I like that. Okay, so that's going to go on the side. I'm going to go ahead and chop some of my herbs. And this is just basil from my garden. I'm trying to use as much as I can before the season is over. Let's just get some basil. And I have some rosemary. And again, I just pull at it in the opposite direction so that I can get all the leaves. And then I have some oregano. And I do the same thing, just grab it from the top slide down. So here are my herbs. Let me get a bigger knife to chop those a little bit finer. And I can hear the water boiling on the other side of the kitchen. So I'm going to count a good 8 minutes from now, 8 to 10 minutes. Um, Alright, let me gather the milk and then we're going to cook the herbs in the milk just a little bit. We're not going to bring it to a boil with uh, the pecans and the orange zest. And I'm going to add nutmeg and um, no salt, just, um, just a little bit of nutmeg, that's it. Here I have about a cup and a half of uh, whole milk. And I'm just going to go ahead and add my mix of pecan, herbs, and orange zest to it. And I'm going to try to keep it at bay. I don't want it to boil over and I'm going to add some uh, nutmeg. And this is the one written in French because these are the ones that my mom sends me. Every time she comes over um, for the holidays, she brings me uh, spices for cooking. So I'm just going to go and ballpark, and ballpark um, about a pinch worth of nutmeg. I don't want to overpower the dish. So I already have. I'm trying to do this so that you can see what I'm doing. These come with their own graters. I'm sure that the uh, American version does that too. And I'm monitoring it because I do not want it to boil. Set. Add a little bit more nutmeg. Okay. So this is going to cook for another maybe one minute, not too much. I just want to soften the uh, pecans, that's it. 
I'm going to use a fork to sift my cauliflowers nicely steamed. So I'm just going to go ahead. This is not the best way to do it with this on the top, but I have to figure out something. Use a fork. Yep. And if the ones on the top are nice and soft, this is done. So I'm just going to turn it off and put it to the side. Okay. So that's done and then we're ready to put it in the dish we're just going to mix the cheese with the milk that's over there and uh, you can add egg if you want to um, I've decided that maybe I won't and just put it in the dish and um, cover it with more cheese and the breadcrumbs and it's ready to go in the oven so let's go do that so here I'm using some regular um, natural Swiss cheese this one is Great Lakes cheese. I don't think I've ever tried it before, but it's just regular Swiss. I'm going to take it out of the package. I'm going to take about half of this. And this is from Ohio and uh, a half a pound. So if I cut it in half, I have a quarter of a pound worth of Swiss cheese. Put that to the side and I'm going to use my new little uh, grater here. I really like this. There's some leftover Swiss that we used yesterday in it. So it's just going to grate this. I buttered one of my um, oven baking dishes and I have a big bowl and what I'm going to do is bring all of my steamed cauliflower into this bowl and pour my milk mixture and my cheese over it and I'm going to mix it just slightly, not too much. I don't want to break the cauliflower and I'm going to pour everything back inside the baking dish. So let's go ahead and do that. And I like using those little baskets because it already drains the cauliflower. If I had done it directly into the bottom of the pan, I would have had to uh, drain it. So here's my cauliflower, nice and steamy. I'm gonna go ahead and add my mixture of milk, pecan, orange, and herbs. And now that's done, I'm just gonna go ahead and add all of my Swiss cheese. Let's not miss any, here we go. And just go ahead and very gently mix them together making sure that all of my cauliflower pieces are nicely coated. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix everything together. And you got to work relatively fast because since everything is still hot, the cheese is melting along the way. And you may only get it on certain parts of your cauliflower, but not all of them. It smells absolutely delicious, you guys. I wish you could smell this. This is such an easy recipe, too. Altogether, I think it takes maybe 20 minutes, not even, to do. And it's got very few ingredients. So this is nicely coated. I'm going to go ahead and put it directly into my dish. Pour everything in here. And it's okay if there is milk at the bottom it just didn't get absorbed yet and it will once it gets into the oven so I just want to spread it nicely now if you don't want to waste any of your food you can use the orange and slice it in half careful the fingers and just squeeze some of the juice from the orange directly onto the top just for a little hint of flavor, not a lot. You can also add cracked peppercorn if you just want to add a little bit more flavor. And this is the part where I'm going to add my onions. I'm just gonna sprinkle them on the top. I don't need a lot, just enough to give it a little bit of taste on the top and right before I put it into the oven I'm just gonna add a little bit 
of Parmesan cheese that's already grated on the top and add some of the panko uh, breadcrumbs. Now you need to add your cheese to taste. There's already cheese in the dish, so you don't want to overdo it. I just sprinkle enough to give it a little bit of a uh, brown and melt on the top. I'm not trying to overpower the dish with cheese. And that's just about enough. And now that I have all my parmesan, I'm just gonna go ahead and add some breadcrumbs on the top. And again, not too much, just to add a little bit of the crunch. I'd say maybe a fourth of a cup, and that's about it. And that's it. Now it's ready to go in the oven. I just have my oven at 425, yeah. and I'm just gonna put it on the top rack, like so, and let it cook for a good uh, 10 minutes until it is nicely golden. Now because the cauliflower is already cooked, uh, technically I don't have to leave it that long. I could just put it on broiler and let it, um, you know, get golden on the top and remove it. But I like to get it um, a little bit more cooked um, and kind of absorb all of the ingredients and again it's a very easy dish so this is like a no-brainer kind of thing if you like cauliflower and you like um, exotic flavors like oranges and basil things like this this is really really good and it's actually a healthy dish as well there's no oil just a little bit of butter underneath it so it's just basically the vegetable a little bit of sugar from the juice and I guess the carbs and the oil from the uh, uh, pecan but that's all you know omega-3 stuff so Anyway, let me do some uh, cleaning around me and um, we'll check it out and uh, see what it looks like once it's cooked. Okay, this is fresh out of the oven and it's nicely golden on the top and that's basically it. Let's look at it once we serve it. Mm. That looks delicious. There we go, so that's what it looks like.